The question is simple. Have any of the systems on my network been compromised? The answer is harder than it should be. Enter AI Hunter. Active Countermeasures has automated and streamlined techniques used by the best pen testers and threat hunters in the industry to create AI Hunter, a network threat hunting solution that does the first pass of a hunt for you to identify systems that are most likely to be compromised and scores the results on a scale from 0 to 100. You can then research those systems in depth with AI Hunter. Focus your valuable time on the systems that need your expertise with AI Hunter. Sign up for a personal demo today at securityweekly.com forward slash ACM. RSA offers business-driven security solutions that provide organizations with a unified approach to managing digital risk that hinges on integrated visibility, automated insights, and coordinated actions. RSA solutions are designed to effectively detect and respond to advanced attacks, manage user access control, and reduce business risk, fraud, and cybercrime. RSA protects millions of users around the world and helps more than 90% of the Fortune 500 companies thrive and continuously adapt to transformational change. For more information, visit Security Week dot com forward slash RSA security. Welcome back to Security and Compliance Weekly, episode 20, our conversation with Wynn Schwartow. Before we jump back into it, I do have a couple more announcements. The Cybersecurity Exchange Day that was being planned by Ocean and the Pell Center that was to be held Wednesday, March 18th in Newport, Rhode Island, has been postponed until further notice. Guessing that's the COVID-19 fallout. Also, we are looking forward to attending Secure World in Boston on March 25th and 26th at the Heinz Convention Center. This is the 16th annual Secure World Conference, and it brings together New England's InfraSec community for training, collaboration, and networking. Attendees can visit over 100 solutions vendors and earn 12 to 16 CPE credits. This year's theme is Animal Defenses of the Animal Kingdom. Vinny Troya will keynote about his new book, Hunting Cyber Criminals, and detail his efforts to take down the Dark Overlord Hacking Group. Security Weekly listeners save $100 off their registration for a full conference pass. To get this, you go to www.secureworldexpo.com and use the discount code, all uppercase, Security Weekly, all one word, and please join us at Secure World Boston. All right. So uh, we've had a great conversation with Wynn so far. We were talking a little bit about FUD and, and, and some of the science behind how brain chemistry works. I was thinking on, on the break, uh, it's not that I disagree with you, Wynn. I, I, I like that you're bringing science and actual what goes on in the brain in terms of I think FUD is really sort of the responses to the things that we encounter. Fear, uncertainty, and doubt are, are – are the reactions to the something else. So I'm glad we've been talking about what the something else is. Um, but uh, right before the break, Scott was asking you a question as a lead up to, uh, I think he has a follow-up question. So I'll flip it over to you, Scott. Yeah, thanks, Jeff. Uh, when uh, the second part of the question, right? And it, sorry, let me take a step back. In the first part, you know, we, we were talking about myelin and what myelin is, right? For mm -hmm. people that have never heard of this topic, concept, whatever, right? Uh, the second part of the question is how uh, how how well studied is myelin, right? I know that uh, uh, that myelin plays a big role in MS, right, as an indicator, uh, and it plays a big role in other diseases as well, right? You were saying that uh, in the last year, right, research has really come out about what myelin is, how it affects the body, so on and so forth. Right. So, uh, uh, what, what, what else, what else can you tell us on that, on that level? All right. I'm, from a medical standpoint, not my field. I know I have read stuff that, uh, breakdowns in the myelin sheathing, uh, can be, uh, an indicator of, uh, Alzheimer's. Other people say over myelin sheathing can be an indicator. That's the white stuff in the brain. If the breaking down, is it too much? And I'm not my area. Not at all. The thing that I found very interesting about the research in myelin is that it effectively creates time delays or time acceleration, uh, uh, information acceleration, and is used as a synchronizing agent in order to increase uh, the ability for the brain to learn. That was my focus on uh, myelin. All the other things, I grant them, but I am not an expert in that at all, and I've not looked at it. Does that okay, mean and that's you, fair. Thank you. Yeah, 
So I guess the question is, more myelin? How do you influence the myelin? What is it about the research when we don't know yet? Okay. (laughs) We don't know yet. um, The uh, measurement of the speed of uh, information transfer or the chemical transfers in axons uh, and the time delays that are occurring because of the depth of the myelin sheathing is brand new stuff in the last year. And I've seen some of the curves. I've seen some of the studies on uh, what they're claiming. But this is Gen 1 stuff that I find interesting. Uh, Mm -hmm. And that's it, uh, because I'm interested in how to increase the weighting factor of good learning versus bad learning, uh, if you want to use those terms. And this was just another one of those interdisciplinary data points that I'm adding into the pot of things that can have an influence upon security behavior. Well, that's interesting because I think what you're getting at is, you know, you know, mm-hmm. when you were sort of introducing yourself at the beginning of the show and, and we were asking, you know, how you felt about the way your predictions or premonitions or visions in the shower have come to fruition, you inferred that, uh, you know, here we are 20, 30, 40 years later and people are still uh not doing security well because they're not learning um they're not getting it uh, i forget the exact term that you used but it, it seems like what you're focused on is you know how do we crack this nut how, what can we do differently how can we understand in order to move the ball forward um mm-hmm. I first got to know you personally the last couple of years talking about uh, uh, the latest book that you published, Analog Network Security, um, to, you know, which to some degree I think is also trying to answer the question, how do we do things different and better to actually move the ball forward? Can you give us sort of a, 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 an abstract of what the book is about? And, and let's talk about that for a few minutes. All right, I'm going to take 500 pages and compress it into 12 seconds. Um, that's all That's all we, most of us have time for, so go. <laughs> the, uh, we have been doing the same thing over and over again for 40 years, and we've been expecting different results. Every time a new technology comes out, we go, ah, it's not going to be a problem. Oh, shit, now it's a problem. What are we going to do? Well, let's do what we did before. It didn't work, but at least we can make a lot of money doing it again. And so th- I've seen this occur, well, 40 some years at this point. So right. at, um, in the 1990s, uh, Bob Ayers, a guy from DISA, and I were sitting in a Polish bar waiting for a client. And they, the client never showed up, but we had a napkin and we had a beer. And we started talking about how to measure security. And what we came up with is that there's no such thing as an equality. There is no equal sign in security. And then over time, that evolved into um, what became analog network security was a couple of foundational principles. Uh, There is no such thing as perfect security. Therefore, there is no one. I can't use that finger, but there is no one. There is no such thing as zero security. Therefore, all security has to exist inside of the boundary conditions of a zero or one, greater than zero or less than one, which means then security is not deterministic. It's probabilistic. Now, keep AI on the side for now, but the rules still apply over there. Mm -hmm. So once you realize that security is not a zero or a one, we have to operate inside of bounded conditions, which means that organizations have to stop thinking in terms of perfection or expecting an answer that is going to satisfy their traditional mindset in a binary way of thinking. Thus, analog. Everything is on a continuum. It's going to be changing in a dynamic world, in a dynamic network. And after deperimeterization, whatever year you want to say that occurred, now we have this whole amorphous network thing that is connecting here and connecting there. And we have these sinewy kind of connections between networks, internetworks, devices, multiple IDM situations. All of that is analog. And so the goal of analog network security was, number one, to teach people the concept of analog that it is a physical domain thing that we've lived with for thousands of years. It's a human domain thing. Now, how do we adapt that kind of thinking to the cyber domain? 
And the first step in doing that is how do you measure security? Uh, the second step is stop looking at risk, start looking at trust, because we do have some measurement vectors that will work in measuring and dynamically uh, analyzing trust. Some of that could be AI-ish introduced, that's a separate discussion, but it's living inside of bounded conditions in continuously variable environments and trying to modify the technical controls and human controls environments around it to reflect the realities of it at a specific moment in time, which then says, oh, there's calculus involved, and yeah, there is a little bit. <laughs> so it's interesting because, uh, you know, when I first uh, was talking to you and, uh, you know, you should give a quick shout out to your mathematician. Uh, oh, Mark Carney. He, oh, he yeah. got his PhD December 10th, uh, 19, oh, excellent. Uh, 2019. And my 2019. shout out is, and I'll give the story very quickly. I was giving a talk in Paris on right. this subject and uh, Mark shouted from the audience, when you're full of shit. And I go, okay, you buy the first beer. And then we sat down at a uh, at a bar, and a lot of people surrounding us. Out came the napkins, and four hours later, right. he goes, me, you're right. Can I be your math <laughs> bitch and prove it? And he uh, is the one who formalized the first layer of provable security formulas uh, right. that are now available. So, uh, and I've had, uh, I've had my share of... Uh... Uh, in-depth talks with Mark, uh, and I'm mm -hmm. overdue for another one, another one. Come to think of it, but it always Dr. kind of in the back. Doctor, Doctor, Doctor Mark, Doctor Mark. Now, uh, with all the salutations and and whatever the diplomas say, um, but yeah, I, I always kind of wondered about the title of your book, and I'm glad you've described it uh, in a way that I understand it because I'm like, why analog? We're living in a digital world, and and no, why no, network? No. Because we're, you know, we're not we're beyond networks. There is no network, you know. Networks have, have you know, morphed in and transformed into these other things that are mostly software driven, containers and Docker and all that kind of stuff. But um, uh, you know, that notwithstanding, and I appreciate that you describe it in a way that people can understand. Uh, and I agree with you in the sense that you know, I you know. I am roughly of the same time frame of you, even though you have calendar years on me. You know, we've roughly in the, been in the business the same amount of time. Um, and I've always felt like, or, or at least the last couple of years, I felt like, you know, in trying to figure out how do we do things differently, because we're clearly not doing things right. Um, you know, my thoughts have been more like, you know, going back to the basics, you know, somehow we that came out of the DOD who used to be the ones that were responsible and expert on security, um, that we've never really conveyed it or, or translated it well into the commercial sector. And I've spent most of the last 25 years in the commercial sector, which I think is a different um, it's it, it, it's a different mission than the DOD mission. Let's put it that way. Um, but what continues to nag at me is how do you get beyond the, uh, the experience that I've had time and time again in, in the private sector is people don't want to have to think people don't want to have <laughs> to figure this all out. Just tell me what little blinky box I need to get and what color should the blinky light be most of the time. So I don't have to think about all this. You know, mm -hmm. so we, we have, we, we live in this world that, that has embraced automation and the, and the, and the myth. And I think it's appropriate to use the term myth, that technology is going to solve all the security problems. And yet you're us old timers say, yeah, there's more to it than that. Well, um, there's a lot more to it than that. Um, one of the things uh, you just said, you know, how do you get people on board? And I agree with that. Um, I've been trying to get some laboratories to pilot some of the simple stuff that uh, I've been talking about. Uh, number one is a comparison of leading competitive vendor products that make claims. We have right. the measurement mechanisms. We know the metrics. We have the tools. Now let's sit and benchmark and do some real honest to God comparisons to find out whether the vendor's differentiations are as uh, minimal as they might be or as great as they might be. We don't know. 
Number two, um, one of the uh, approaches that in analog network security is how to get rid of DDoS and spam. And there's a fairly simple model. And back uh, uh, to Josh's point is the by using the equivalent of myelin sheathing in part of our network controls at the tier one and tier two levels, we can effectively add time delays and speed up certain circuits within it in the tier one, tier two uh, mechanisms in order to be able to actually stop DDoS, stop spam, trace back the source of it, and reduce uh, traffic by 97 to 99% on those backbones. And that is a simple thing to model. And uh, we're looking for uh, educational partners or commercial partners who would like to sit down. I'm not looking for money because, uh, I mean, I'm doing this for the goodness of the industry. And try it. Let's see if we can benchmark this in a VM environment. And then if it works at a small mesh network level in a VM environment, let's see if we can scale it up a little bit. So I'm looking to get some experiments done at this point. And once the experimental evidence is there, hopefully capture some attention and say, yeah, this may be an alternate approach. So you're saying it, that, so you're saying that uh, the use of SPF and DKIM are not the correct method for dealing with spam? I have no idea what that means. <laughs> um, so uh, those are uh, those are initials. I don't know. <laughs> the sender policy framework, right, and the domain keys identified mail, right. It's basically saying that if it's coming from a uh, a verified address, that it's mm -hmm. good mail, right? Mm -hmm. Are you saying right. that those that we need to throw that out and switch to something different? No, I don't want to throw anything out. I want to try something entirely new that ah, okay. uh, can re can reduce the traffic. I'm not dissing anything because wh whatever we have, we have. However, a lot of those approaches that are being done do not reduce the fundamental tier one, tier two level traffic because you're looking closer to endpoint solutions that have nothing to do with the carriers. If the carriers okay. get involved in the model that I'm talking about, then the endpoint solutions become virtually meaningless because they won't be needed anymore and it can all be done invisibly at the carrier level now uh, so you're, you're saying step the Wait, game you, up you just yeah. predicted the endpoint security is going to die yeah <laughs> that was <laughs> there, uh, there's 80, i i, I there's don't want to like kill endpoint security endpoint vendors that just that just all went ah <laughs> yeah I'm, you could hear the simultaneous trust verify. all right <laughs> let's say that my idea about this uh, DDoS at the tier one, tier two, all the carrier levels, let's say that's right. And let's say it's all perfect and we can reduce traffic 97, 97, uh, 97 to 99% as the models predict. Let's say that's true. That does not say to get rid of trust but verify at the endpoint because you always still want to have what I call not defense in depth. I want detection in depth. Defense in depth will never work. Detection and depth is where this industry has failed. Hmm. Yeah, I had two thoughts when uh, first. Uh, Only two? On Come early, on. Well, two that I'm going to bring up now. Uh, the first one was, you know, do, do you have an impression that, you know, for all your benevolent uh, uh, motives for wanting to try this out, uh, you know, do you see have you seen in in your in your career uh you know the economic forces in play that fundamentally don't want you to succeed and don't want you to discover an actual right way of doing things because as we're inferring it, it would put a whole lot of businesses out of business yes over the years um I I'm, I'm going to give one specific example. Uh, we all know of uh, various startups, uh, early stage companies that have had some amazing technology that get bought by big ass companies. And then suddenly that technology completely disappears. Yep. The one that is most profound to me goes back to the uh, group that came by Lee Sutterfield out of the Information Warfare Center in San Antonio, Texas in the mid-90s. Yep. And yep. it was a Wheel company group. called Wheel Group. And Jeff, Wheel you group. probably know who they are. Absolutely. And they had some amazing technology. And uh, John, I forget his last name, president of Semantic at the time, said, we're buying that. 
<laughs> and they buried it and fired everybody. Was that for pecuniary evil? I don't know, but it, if it smells like a duck. <laughs> yeah, and Will Group lasted all of about, what, 18 months, if that? Uh, it did. stayed very, very small. It had uh, some amazing capabilities and then disappeared. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the talk, a lot of the modeling that they use in there is not that drastically different than some of the stuff I'm talking about now, just from a, a, a an earlier vision and an earlier approach. Um, I do have to correct you on one thing, though. I, I think Wheel Group was acquired by Cisco, not Symantec, if if I if memory serves. Oh, um, yeah, you know what? I, I I'm gonna declare too much myelin in the brain for that one. <laughs> uh, I, 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 uh, I'll de I'll defer to my historical uh, error. We're all we're all we're all allowed to have an old people moment. Well, but, but, but either one of those uh, companies is notorious for where good technology goes to die. So it, it, you could interchange them at any time. <laughs> and and at least one of those companies isn't really considered to be a security company to this day. Correct. Um, <laughs> I'm going to stay out of that argument. You you guys can do that one. Fair enough. Fair enough. So, uh, in, yeah, I don't even remember what my second question was at this point, so it doesn't matter. Um, but, you know, coming back to the, uh, you know, the premise of this show, which is security and compliance to the degree that, uh, I think we agree that more education, more awareness, more, you know, really trying to solve the problem, uh, the real problems and not just sort of buying into the way the industry promotes products and promotes automation and promotes not having to think about what it is that you're doing. Um, do you see any, any role or what role do you see for, uh, compliance, you know, whether it's regulatory, I, I, I come from a PCI background, which is private you know, regulation, not government regulation. So I, I have sort of a different view on things, but, you know, is there a role for compliance? What, what is, or should the role be for compliance in terms of helping to steer organizations in the right direction? There's or actually is, something that, that occurred recently that I'm was impressed with. Um, do you consider uh, GDPR to be compliance? Uh, it's regulatory we talk about based, it, so. more privacy focus, but it has a compliance slant to it. Yeah. 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 I mean, all of these things are doing some of that. Um, you mentioned another word automation and whether it's SOAR automation, compliance automation doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. What those imply is some degree of the attempt of the buzzword AI, which I'm against the word, but I'm going to lose that battle. I'm well aware of that. And what the EU Commission did uh, six months ago roughly was said, okay, uh, under the EU uh, privacy guidelines and is interpreted by GDPR, if you're going to use AI-fueled decision-making processes on an automated basis, you have to be able to explain how that system arrived at the decision that it did. We don't have the science to do that yet. And I'm hoping that that would give a little bit of impetus to pull back on the non-human intervention automated systems, whether they're compliance or privacy or security oriented. Uh, we, we, we tend to want to fall into this trap of let the computers make the decisions. And in this particular incidence, I th instance, I think it's uh, the EU Commission is giving us uh, a fair amount of warning from a policy standpoint, the data scientists are already aware of that exists. Which is it's hard to prove your um, your expert system sometime and what they actually do because they themselves don't know what it actually does. You can't prove them. The, 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 there is no mathematical model right now that can prove how any uh, ML, DL, deep neural network, whatever the term you want to use, we ha don't have the technology to be able to explain it. XAI, explainable artificial intelligence, does not exist. And so do you fall back to your mathematical models in the book as a way to potentially prove your approach versus another approach? 
Because that math we, works out. We touch. We only touch on AI when we were doing the book. We had to really say, "Are we going to go down this road, or are we just going to say future problem?" And we chose, uh, thanks to Mark, uh, was future problem. And Dr. there's another Mark. gentleman, Doctor Mark. Sorry, Doctor. And then there's another gentleman, Clarence Chow. Uh, he was my uh, AI mentor from Stanford, and we started really ex exploring what I call the Kobayashi Maru of AI in that it is not explainable. And the only way to get around any of them of these is to cheat at using current technological approaches. So uh, there is no answer. Uh, and I'll pose this for your, um, for your listeners. Let's say you got all these AI vendors for whatever IDS, whatever technique you know, or product that they want to sell you. Cool. Now let's shift it over to the human domain. You're going to hire a CISO. And the CISO is great on paper. Oh, and his interviews are amazing. And he is the right guy. And then you ask him the question, um, how do we know you're going to do a good job? And the CISO candidate says, I'm the best candidate here. I know everything about it. I have all the data inputs. I get all of this information and I coalesce it and I will tell you what to do. I'll tell you what the answer is, but I'm never going to tell you how I arrived at that answer. Are you going to hire him? <laughs> Beautiful. Maybe. Beautiful. <laughs> I think that is a uh, an actually a good point to to leave this discussion. And uh, Win, thank you so much for agreeing to join us today. Uh, no, thank you guys for being awesome interviewers. You got, I mean, it's so nice to be able to talk to people that have a clue what I'm talking <laughs> about. It's it's rare, and I really appreciate it. And thank you for helping me simplify it down to uh, terms uh, to, so I can make it more explainable. And, hey, when, uh, if somebody yeah. wanted to, if somebody wanted to get your books, right, where can they go? Go to Amazon. Okay. Analog is there, network security. Is there a direct on, on seller? Amazon. Is there a direct seller in case those of us like to boycott Amazon for other reasons? <laughs> um, the RSA bookstore guy. I, geez, and I, I, I don't remember is the the, the <laughs> URL of any of that. Uh, okay. but, uh, then. Uh, Gnostic, uh, Gnosis, K-N-O-S-I-S hyphen I-T dot com. It's a French company that handles the European distribution. Um, okay. I've, I've done it not because I'm pro-Amazon, anti-Amazon. I've done it to make my life easy. Well, we have we have other friends in the industry like No Starch Press that have ongoing issues with uh, Amazon selling counterfeits. So I don't want to automatically push people to Amazon. At least give people choices. Oh uh, no no, Bill Bill's a great guy, except Bill yep. doesn't want to represent books that he doesn't publish. Right. Well, and he doesn't like that people are making money off of his books. Uh, anyway, uh, and I'm talking about uh, No Starch Press, not Bill. That's yeah, yeah, different discussion question. for another time. Different guy, <laughs> um, and uh, and hopefully next time maybe uh, we, we can get Doctor Mark on the show sometime so we can hey, we can love hear it. The real oh, that would be awesome. Stuff. That'd be great. Yeah. You Super. name it, I'll make sure he's there. We'll need a whiteboard because he's going to have to explain all that math. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe he can't right. explain it. Maybe it's unexplainable. I looked at his PhD and I understood not even the title. All right, parting parting shot, and then I'll let everybody go. But the curmudgeons in the room all have books behind them on their bookshelves. With that, <laughs> we'll call it a day. Thanks, Win. Thanks, uh, everyone, for listening. Thank Until you Until next much. time, this is Security and Compliance Weekly. <laughs>